G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now every year my model club has a kit we all have to build and for this year <laughs> it's this tiny little um, Japanese destroyer, the uh, Sakura. Right? I hope I pronounced that correctly, if not tough. Um, now I built a little one of these but it was a Tamiya kit of a similar type um, destroyer. Here's a pic. So um, that's, that's kind of what they should look like. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's what most people would do, um, but not me. Um, this is what I came up with. Release the Kraken! Yeah, in my defence, they, um, they did say you could put photo etch railings on. Oh, I did that. Um, they did say if you wanted to, you could replace the barrels and the masts with, um, with brass rod. Well, I did my masts. Didn't worry too much about the barrels. I went too bad. Um, it had to be on a base the same size as the kit box, well I did that, yeah, I did that. You had to create a seascape obviously, well I did that. Uh, they said marine animals were allowed. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I did ask them at the time, they all thought I was joking, I said, well, um, could you have a kraken? <laughs> they said, well, okay, it's a marine animal, and they sort of thought, you know, the idiot's not going to build a kraken, is he? Of course, the word being here, the idiot. <laughs> so, um, Yes, um, I kind of made a crack and um, strangling this uh, this ship, and um, there you go. So um, now look, this was a lot of fun, and uh, I sort of knocked it up as you do with all these competitions. The um, you've got a whole year, right? But um, you kind of leave it to the last week, and then go, oh, shit, I've got to build this bloody thing for club. So um, in a mad panic in the last week, I came up with this. So I'll, I thought I'll take you through the process because a lot of people have asked, how did I do all of that? Um, so I'll take you through the process of what I did because there's a bit of a trick to this if you turn it around okay now the lighting hasn't changed but see it's all in shadow okay I'll show that to you again all right so you might get the hint here this side looks like it's lit and that side looks like it's a shadow and I'm not using that lights to do that that was done with paint so there's a trick to that as well all right so what we'll do is we shall Go through the process, and I'll show you how I made a little filmer. <laughs> Work it out. I'll um, show you how I made filmer, Kraken. <laughs> and um, all the little tricks I did to put this together. Now, there's not much to this kit. As you can see, you, you, uh, there's a little base for the water line. You get a little weight, which is handy, because you can do war gaming, I suppose, these little ships. There are only two sprues, which are kind of empty now, because I've used the parts. Um, and there was the hull, which is one piece, and, and then you get the instructions, right? Uh, and, and it's all in Nipponese, right? So, um, yeah, can't read a bloody thing. Um, that's fine. That's fine if you're of the Oriental persuasion. But um, the rest of the instructions, well, again, you, you, um, you know, it, 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 it's all in that sort of um, character set. Uh, but it doesn't matter because there's bugger all to do. You just um, throw the bloody guns together. There's not much to that. So once you've done the uh, the turrets and the superstructure and the two funnels which really takes you five seconds <laughs> then you attach it to the hull and the hull and the deck are all one piece so um that's pretty easy goes together really nicely the um davits are probably the fiddliest thing to put on now the um various parts like the little tube here which actually runs up to the funnel and um the uh the mass here i i replaced all those with um, brass rod because it's just easy to do. The detail is quite good. I just felt it'd be so much easier. So I just made all those out of brass. And um, then I basically cracked the thing in half and um, chiseled it down a bit and it looked like this. And that's the final result. And you can see I just cut a wedge out there on the hull in the middle so it sort of fell. Dropped the lifeboats out so they sort of looked like they'd fallen off. And the um, mast you can see there I've replaced with brass. It was just so much easier to do. With the basic construction out of the way, I needed to make the Kraken, and I used milliput. Um, so this is like a two-part sort of um, putty stuff, and you um, knead it together, you roll it and fold it and fold it and roll it, right? And then you end up with a sort of a clay-type substance, which you've got plenty of time to shape, and you can use a bit of water to smooth things. It's, it's really easy to use. I'd never used it before, and I really enjoyed using it, and um, I'll be doing some more milliput on a number of other builds where I need something sort of, you need something a bit wobbly or shapely made. Yeah, anyway, all I did was I basically rolled some tubes for the uh, tentacles and then I stabbed them with a um, an evergreen rod here 
plastic rod that's just a tube. Well, it's a tube, not a rod, right? And so it had a little hole, which I figured was the right size. So I just rolled these rolled these little sausages of um, milliput and then went <coughs> and I created all the suckers. And similarly with the um, the head of the of the kraken, I just rolled a kind of a cone type shape again out of um, what milliput I had. Actually, originally I wasn't even going to do the head. I was just going to have the tentacles coming out. But I'd, I'd actually mixed up far too much. This I only did about oh, an inch of each. So, you know, you've got to do it two bits. So, uh, like there's two different colours. We you waffling on? You might as well show it how it did, not Yes. So it's all very exciting. So you get, uh, right? Those of you, you get, you get two different, two different things, right? And they react when you put them together. So I, I cut about, you know, an inch of each one, which I thought would be heaps. <laughs> it was, it was far too much. And, um, Kneaded that together, you knead it for about five minutes. It's quite obvious when it's when it's the right consistency because you uh, it, it these are both different colours. And once you've kneaded it correctly, the whole thing is one colour and it's quite obvious. Anyhow, I um so I made the little sausages that they, they weren't oh they're probably less than my fingers really, they were tiny thin little things, and I made up all the tentacles and I thought that's all I need, I just need tentacles coming out. But then I had all this milli putt left over, you know, I didn't didn't know quite what to do with it. Um, sort of fiddling around, coming up with ideas. And then I realised, oh, well, I can put the head on. Why don't I put the head of the bloody, the Kraken? So I made a conical sort of tube, but kind of flattened it out, made it a bit wobbly. And I stabbed it again with, um, well, actually, I made a couple of balls for eyes. Stabbed those with the um, with the thing. Uh, it's probably better if I show you, isn't it? Yes, it's sort of a tube. So, yeah, he's just a tube. He's just a tube. Right? Poor little bugger. <laughs> there he is. He's just a sort of a tube where I flattened it um, and squeezed it to a point. And, and I made a couple of little triangles which I slapped on. And the millipat sticks to itself so it's easy. And all he was roll a couple of balls for his eyes and then I jammed that tube. Well, I just jammed that tube in his eyes, which basically created a hole but also created a little pop-up for the eyeballs. It was as simple as that. So I literally threw him together. The um, construction of the uh, plastic boat Took about an hour, less than an hour. And um, what took me five minutes to knead the milli part, and then probably 10 minutes to make all the bits. Because once I have the tentacles, they kind of naturally were wobbly. So I just kind of stuck them over this and um, let them fold and go into places. So I flattened out the end of the tentacles, you know, just two of them, because like, like, from memory, those sort of squids have those big catchy type arms. So I, I flattened them out and made a little sort of pads at the end of those. That was kind of fun. But basically it curved just naturally. And wherever it fell and whatever it did, I just let it happen. I, I literally was just in pure creative mode and I simply let this thing happen and fall into place. And it's probably why, one, I enjoyed it so much and two, it kind of turned out so interesting is I just let the thing create itself. And that was fun. And to me, this is sort of getting back to what modelling was all about for me, which was just basically getting a kit and throwing it together and having some fun and not stressing about, you know, painting it a certain colour and getting the roots correct. I don't give a shit with this build. I just had fun, was creative and got back to modelling. And in the end, I mean, I really love what I end up with. Anyhow, on more with some of the construction. Once I had the crack and tentacles sort of all wrapped around it, and you can see there, that's the green colour the milliput is, it was time to create the water effect. The base was just made out of a bit of card that I had lying around. It actually, um, I think it might have even come out of a kit box. It was quite thick. It's probably about a oh, millimetre, millimetre and a half, half um, um, cardboard. So that was quite stiff, quite quite thick, and it was wide on one side. That was terrific. And to make the water, really, was so easy. I used some PVA white wood glue, right? And all I did, and I will show you now, it is simple as this, is all I did was... I, I basically just got the glue out and I just went, oh well, there'll be water ripples, um, you know, and then to shape them, all I did then was grab a toothpick, which is eluding me here, oh, here's one, um, and then all I did to basically to, to do a bit of shaping is um, push the ends out and, and got my, um, you know, it just sort of whatever I needed, if I wanted a bit more shape to them. And that is all I did. Okay. Now, the glue kind of holds its shape and you get you get sort of whatever effect you wanted, okay? 
So you could even grab some and do some little thin lines if you wanted to. So you, we literally just start, you know. This reminds me when I was a child, you know, I used to play with my, the poo in my nappies. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's basically all I did. Now, I let that dry. Well, that's going to drip off there. Um, obviously, you leave it horizontal. And I let that dry. And then uh, I put a coat of primer on, see what it looked like. And that was quite nice. And then I thought, well, I can build up another layer. So this is what happened next. I realised at this point, I'd forgotten to add my PE rails. So I shoved those in. Didn't matter if they're a bit sort of bent. That sort of all went to the effect of the crack and crash and everything. And I had a little bit of easy line there, which um, I did have drooping to start with, but somehow at some point it tightened up. But anyhow, it um, added a lot more detail to the build. Now, the cool thing about PVA glue is um, it dries clear. Right, so here that hasn't even been painted, it's shaved the top. So, my layers I actually end up with three layers in the end. Um, you can see through. So, I put the first layer on, painted everything black. I thought that's good, but I haven't got enough lumpiness. So, as you can see here in this psychedelic thing, I started building up layers of the PVA glue over the top of the primer, and it worked really well. So, I put on a second layer, and then I started my grey effect. Now, this is where It's dark on that side, right? It's dark no matter which angle you put it in because it's actually still black. It's not a shadow of the light. It's actually a painting effect. And this side, no matter which way you tilt it, is always grey, okay? Because what I did was I positioned the airbrush here and I simply went and sprayed it like that. I did lift up a little bit so I could get the back, but I'm spraying horizontally or airbrushing horizontally. So from this angle, everything is grey. And then as you go over, you notice it gets darker and darker and darker and darker. So the grey effect worked really well. I was, I was really happy with it. And I added even more layers of the, um, of the PVA glue over the top to add even more height. Because there's some points here which, had, um, which was sort of scratched with the cardboard and what have you. And I just wanted a bit more height here and there. So I just, again, played. I experimented and I played and there was no absolute rhyme or reason to what I was doing. I was just being creative in the moment, which is joyful and it's fun. And anybody who's modelling who says, oh, modelling's always hard work, you're taking it too fucking seriously, really. Okay? Try something like this where you don't care. You grab a kit, you just slap it together, you're not that stressed, you explore where it takes you. Have some fun. So at this point, I pretty well got it the way I wanted it. And I just had the various modulations of the grey and all the shadows. And, and that was working, but something was missing. I realised, look, the black and white is working, all the greys. But I really need some highlights. So I picked out the eyes. And I just painted a bit of white on those eyes. And ran a little dark wash in behind them. And I picked out things like the, um, the blast bag covers there. On the, um, on the guns. They're supposed to be white. And I ran a bit of wash over them to sort of dull them out. The uh, searchlight, even though you can hardly ever bloody see it. Uh, let's see if we can find the bloody thing. Oh, we've got dogs, we've got cars, we've got everything here today. Sunday morning, God, go back to bed, you bastards. Um, I don't even think you can see it, but there's a searchlight there. All right? It's a bit hard to see. There, there it is. And that's actually what. So there you go. <laughs> I sort of thought of painting a beam over, but um, I figured the electrics would probably shit themselves by the time they're cracking it, crack the thing in too. And I painted the um, the lifeboat. That one's completely fallen over. Uh, the one on this side, oops, the one on this side over here, that's the right way up. In, in hindsight, I think I probably should have done those back, back around the other way. It probably would have been nicer in the foreground to have the one that um, was basically up the right way so you could have seen the ribs of it. And then in the back here, you know, but it doesn't matter. This is just, just how it all went together. Um, and so that's it. And there's blast bags that I did on the um, the front turret here. And, and then I felt that was it. That's all it needed. That was basically all this model needed. And that gave me the look. And by this stage, I sort of realised what I was making was something like those late night Friday. Sorry, my wobbling. That's my gout. Those um, late night Friday horror movies that uh, the old black and white ones where the um, the monsters are always rubbery and bloody terrible and you know it's all dark and gloomy and bad acting and everything and I'd sort of done that I'd made one of those old bloody 
horror movies <laughs> that I remember from a kid. Now it's shaking out as I'm laughing. And, um, and that's it. And I loved it. And the effect by spraying in one direction only with the grey that gave me that modulating effect. And it's a trick that um, people use on um, figures a lot. They spray one direction black and one direction white um, to give the light and shade effects that you need on a figure. And it works equally as well in modelling. So what I've actually discovered out of this, even though it was all sort of done as a joke and having a bit of fun, what I've actually discovered is this could be quite a trick for painting like a ship or something like that, is actually do a modulation by spraying dark colour and light colour and then paint everything else on. What I realised is I didn't have the time. I'd already built things. Um, it was going to be really difficult and I'm still suffering a little bit of gout wobbliness. So I went, oh, I really can't do the detail painting. And the same with, with the ship, with the, with the deck and everything. I thought, again, I can't really do the detail painting. Uh, but the black and white effect was my solution and way to get around not having to actually do a proper paint job. But it in itself became something incredibly interesting. I think so. And a lot of fun. Anyhow, we'll finish this video now with uh, with a montage of various bits of the tentacles. <laughs> Stop laughing, Harry. You're shaking the camera. And, um, and I hope you enjoyed this. So that's what I did for my build of this Fujimi Japanese destroyer. Hope you liked it. Anyhow, comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think of my craziness. Anyway, that's it. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. <laughs>